Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus for episode three of five on formation. We are no longer Test Tube Plus, now we're D News Plus. We've always been associated with D News. You probably know me from D News. If you don't, you can subscribe to them too. It's really awesome. But today we're now D News Plus. Check out the cool bar down at the bottom. It's awesome. Let us know what you think in the comments. This week we're talking about formation, as in the formation of Earth, the formation of humanity, the formation of the solar system. That's what we've talked about so far. Today we're talking about how galaxies form, tomorrow we're talking about how the universe forms, and the next day we have a special episode for you that I'm not going to spoil. So you'll have to subscribe so you get that one too. So where do galaxies come from? No idea. Nobody really knows. But we do have some theories, and some theories agree that shortly after the Big Bang, a little less than 14 billion years ago, the universe began to cool off and hydrogen and helium started forming. Because if you think about hydrogen, it's like one proton, one electron. It's really simple, so it has to be one of the first elements. And also, this all involved dark matter. After that, the theories seem to split. We've got the monolithic collapse and the secular evolution. Monolithic collapse is the universe started out as a big clump and then broke down into galaxies. You know, like when you're at a conference, you got your big meeting and then you got your little breakout sessions and everybody gets to do something different. There's secular evolution, that's where the universe started out as small little particles, and then slowly it collected into galaxies. I like this theory because it kind of fits with what we know of solar system formation and planetary formation, and also even life formation. Things just kind of start coalescing. It started with halos of dark matter after the Big Bang. It's funny that we call them halos of dark matter because we don't know what dark matter is. According to NASA, they know more about what it isn't than what it is, but it makes up most of the matter in the universe. They know that it's dark, which means it emits no light and we can't really detect it very well. It outweighs ordinary matter, like stars or gas or anything made of atoms, really, by about five times. And you know it's there because it's got gravitational attraction. Every galaxy that we know of, we believe, is held together by dark matter. And some astronomers believe that dark matter can pull in atoms, which creates regions dense enough to make galaxies. So as the dark matter pulls things together, these particles together in the secular evolution model, eventually we can create stars, we can create nuclear fusion, we can form solar systems and eventually get to Beyonce. This happens when you produce enough stars, you get a lot of solar systems and you get all of these different stars and they come together and make galaxies, also coalescing together. Some of the stars are going to burn out over time because this happens over millions or billions of years and they become globular clusters, which sounds messy, but it's not. And there's also gas clouds like nebulas and rotating disks and all sorts of crazy stuff happening all throughout the billions of years of our history and this universe. What happens is those rotating disks would attract more gas and dust. And then since there's more mass there, there's more gravity and that would attract more gas and dust. And eventually they'll form a galactic disk. Does this sound familiar? Are you getting like a repeat, like deja vu vibe? The galaxies then attract other galaxies, or once they form a galaxy, can fly through and destroy, you know what? More on that later. But that's not the end, okay? Edwin Hubble was the first to classify the nearby galaxies to what we can see. And he put them in two main categories, elliptical, and spherical. The more galaxies they spotted, they began to not be able to categorize them as easily. So they thought, okay, we'll just make a third category. We've got elliptical and spherical, we'll call this one irregulars. But we know now that these are actually galaxies that are interacting. Because galaxies are always changing, and there are so many of them out there. They collide into one another, they can make more stars, they can merge together and form all sorts of new shapes. And, and a galaxy, it's more than just stars. It's plasma, it's black holes, superheated jets, shock waves, gas and dust, all sorts of different things all happening in one kind of cloud of stuff. Obviously, the more observation we did, the more we started to be able to pull them out, you know, spiral galaxies and elliptical galaxies and all sorts of things. And they're determined by their shapes, but you can also determine galaxy classifications by looking at how much gas each galaxy has. The more gas in a galaxy, you would have a bluer galaxy with younger stars, and they would usually be spherical. You would have less gas in a galaxy, they're usually redder with older stars and they're more elliptical. But what else don't we know about galaxies. A big reason that galaxies are a mystery still is because 
this stuff happens over hundreds of millions or billions of years. It takes way longer than even the history of life on our planet. I mean, we've got all these pictures and we can look at galaxies across the sky and we can see galaxies doing all sorts of different things. What we're really looking at is what happened back in time, right? Because light is a constant speed and it's traveling, you know, 671 million miles an hour. And our closest neighbor galaxy is the Andromeda galaxy, which is 14 quintillion miles away. So when we see Andromeda, we're not looking at it now, we're looking at it two and a half million years ago, because space is really huge. So galaxies form by coalescing these stars that are forming inside of these clouds of nebulas and dust. And it's similar to a solar system formation. But what about the universe? Because you get, you know, a planet that can get life because it has a collection of little proteins and RNAs maybe. Then you have a collection of planets, gas and dust, and then it's a solar system. You got a collection of stars and some gas and dust, and then you got a galaxy. What about a universe? How do you make one of them? We're gonna talk about that tomorrow on Test Tube Plus. Let us know what you think of this series on formation down in the comments, and also tell us what you think of the new look of D News Plus. Thanks for watching, everyone. You can come find me on Twitter, at Trace Dominguez, and we'll see you tomorrow with more galaxy stuff. I mean, universe stuff. It's big.